Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in today. Today we're going to go ahead and start working on my One Series uh, 128i. I haven't worked on it or driven it in like months. Even today I had to start it and move it from the front of my house and the battery was dead so I had to like uh, put a jump pack on it. But yeah, right now I'm just going to go ahead and start cleaning it up before I put it in the garage and get started on this project because since this is Florida, uh, when a car's been sitting for so long, uh, anything could be in it that I don't want to bring in like a snake or a frog or whatever else. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get it washed right now. Started on it, so it looks kind of a mess right now. See all the pollen and whatnot, leaves. So, gonna get right at it. So I finished going ahead and cleaning up the car. I didn't do a full wash. I just wanted to get all the pollen and leaves off. And yeah, I didn't want all that stuff sitting on the paint. So once I'm done doing the suspension and fixing the pulley and the belt and a few other little things, then yeah, I do a full detail afterwards. Right now, it cleans up pretty good just with, just with that wash alone. Uh, you can see like all this leaves and stuff, so it's yeah bad. So I'm gonna pull it in and then start the process. All right, so new day and starting back on this. I got all the tires off, uh, sitting on jack stands, and yeah, I have both sides off. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do? I'm gonna start doing the rears first, and first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and take out this liner right here which is pretty simple just go ahead and pop this up and pull it backwards exposing out all the battery and the modules muff module put that over to the side and then what we're gonna do is take off these panels right here so this panel well, this piece right here, and then pull this out, and then this panel right here. So the way to pull them out is gonna have to use a pry tool. Hopefully you have one, it'll be way easier to pull these like black tabs out. If you look along the whole side, you'll see a bunch of um, black tabs. So go ahead, pull those out, and then you're gonna have to also remove this right here. you see see uh, two screws. The other one's right here. So remove those two screws. All right, so first thing, pop this out. Comes out pretty easily. That just gives you access to the rear tail light for the driver's side. Sticks to the side. And then over on this side, same thing, let's pop this out. Comes out pretty easy. And yeah, so now I'm going to go ahead and work on this side and to do that, I'm going to go ahead and pull these tabs out. Alright, so I have both sides out, pulled them out and there they are right here. So driver side, passenger side and the middle and yeah, I left this piece in right here. So all I did was like pull it up a little bit and have it come through the edges right here just pull it out the sides but other than that it's pretty straightforward so i'm gonna do now is lift this boot and there you can see the top of the shock tower same over here and you can see this shock tower also what comes next now is we have to remove the top shock tower and I pretty much hate these on the OEM because you need to use two different tools to get them off. Up here you need to use a 6 socket and down here you need a 16 millimeter open ended wrench or you can use either side but I use this side right here. So stick that on like so and then you use this up top like that and then you use this and use the bottom socket, not the bottom socket, the wrench to turn it to the right. So the top, the top socket is to hold it in place, and then the bottom is to turn it to loosen it. All right, so I have, so I got them all off right now. So this is what it looks like. 
that top hot part top hot piece it's integrated the screw and bump stop and yeah that's the top this part came out as a whole so like it's like glued in at the bottom between them so I'm glad that this piece is off right now because generally that top tip part usually breaks off uh, on my 335 the top piece broke off on my OEM ones and the only way I could get it off is I had to cut the shock in two at the bottom and then pull it out that way so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and work at the bottom and get the bottom shock bolts out so it's only one more bolt left and then these shocks will come out so I pulled the shock out the hole and I'm gonna use the same six millimeter and put it on top. So this way we hold the whole shock from spinning. And we're gonna use 11 16th socket or 16th and stick it underneath. Like right here, over here. And if you look up here, when I turn it, you see this is spinning. You can't see it's spinning because right here. All right. And you see how it turns. So hence why we need to have that up top to hold it. So I'm gonna hold the top and then turn from down here to remove this bottom bolt. Right, so the bottom bolt is out. You can take this off and Push this down and lift up. And then here you go, shocks out. So I'm gonna do that on the driver's side also. And then I'm gonna do the reverse order of what I did to get the shocks out with the new shocks. And that's that for the rear. So I have the rear down and the tires on. So the only thing left to do is go ahead and do the front uh, suspension. I went ahead and changed the rotor, the brake pads, all the way around. Um, yeah, so all I gotta do next is just do the shocks right now. But not right now, I'm gonna do that tomorrow because I don't have no, enough time today to do that. There's actually about six bolts that need to be taken off, seven. Uh, let's take those off, then everything pops right out. So that's pretty straightforward. Before I'm done for the day, I've got to do the most important thing, and that's use some WD-40. P Blaster would be better, but I don't have any right now, so go down here and spray it inside the joints and let it sit overnight so that tomorrow, when I loosen all this up, it'll just like, the shock will slide right out of the knuckle right here. It's a new day, so I'm gonna be starting with taking apart the front suspension. So I already loosened these a bit, but what you're gonna need is a 13 millimeter open-ended wrench or even a socket so the only reason why i say that is just to get to this one back here just use the open side and get it loose uh if you really just want to use a socket you could just, just loosen this one and move it over to the side and give you access to that bolt but i just like to use this since it's a little bit more quicker and i don't have less bolts i gotta take off i'm just gonna leave them just like this like a few threads on so i don't want the bolts off because when we take it off from the bottom uh, I don't want it to just fall all the way through. So those will keep it on. All right, so next we're gonna use is a 5 8 and get these uh, end links off. So it runs all the way down from here, down to the bottom right here. So there's a screw behind there, we gotta take it off and then screw right over here. But the main thing with these is that it has a bolt right here you have to hold on to. I'm just gonna use a channel lock on these just to take them off but if you're going to reuse these i wouldn't recommend using it just use an open-ended wrench that fits in there and hold it in place while i use the socket back here and loosen it next i use an 18 millimeter socket and this bolt back here i already loosened it but 18 millimeter here and then at the back side just use uh, another 18 millimeter or i just use this wrench and held this in place while i use the ratchet and turn this to loosen it. So I'm gonna use an 18 millimeter socket and put it on this bolt and then use my wrench and hold the bolt right here. And I'm not fully taking the bolt out, I'm just loosening it. And you'll notice that this arm right here will like droop down a little bit. 
All right, so now that that part's loose, I went ahead and take off the brake bracket. So it's back here and you just pretty much slide it out like so. Now it's ready to come out. So make sure that these bolts are still on. They're not um, fully tight, but I just have them still on. And everything should be loose. So what you're gonna do is, I just use my foot and just hit right here. And the shock will just slide all the way down. So I already started, it only took like two hits or so. And it came out right here. So I got one more to hit and then it'll come out. So it's loose now, so we could go ahead and just take these bolts off at the top. And once we remove those, uh, hold the shock, pull it down, and just pull it out, and that's it. So I have the whole shock in now, and brand new male tie rods, uh, new brakes, new rotors, all the way around, and yeah. Pretty much now, I'm just gonna put the wheel on and put it back down on the ground, drive it around, and see how it feels. One thing to note with a front suspension is that sometimes you need a spring compressor to compress the springs a little bit, so that it gives you enough clearance to pull the whole shock out. So if you don't remove all the, some things called the low control arms and all that good stuff, you don't remove those off the hub assembly, then most likely you just need to use a spring compressor. In my case, all I gotta do is use loosen that bolt and generally just falls out. But if it doesn't and I still need more clearance, then I have to remove all those bottom ones. But yeah, cool to have one on standby. You could also ram one from my Advance or O'Reilly. I don't know about O'Reilly. But yeah, I know Advance got it. All right, so thanks for watching. I'll see y'all in the next one. And most likely the next project I'm gonna be tackling will be my 335. I still gotta do the suspension on that car. So yeah, see y'all in the next one.